Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to cut and sew a badot or a cape neckline blouse. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. A pair of scissors. Tape measure. Water erasable fabric pencil. African print fabric, lining fabric, skin tone mesh, lace fabric, the pattern pieces which I drafted in the previous tutorial, pins, interfacing, foam wording. I will use this to pad the bust area of the blouse. These are all the pattern pieces that I will cut out of my fabric. The link to the tutorial will be above and in the description box below. I will cut the front and the back yoke pieces and also the sleeves on the lace fabric, while the remaining pattern pieces will be cut on the African print fabric. So I'll go ahead to do the cutting now. So now I have gone ahead to do the cutting. This is the sleeves. I use one inch side seam allowance, half an inch at the upper part and half an inch at the aim. I cut two pieces on the lace fabric. These are the three pieces for the back. I use half an inch seam allowance all around the three back pieces. Except for the side seam, where I use 1.5 inches side seam allowance. I do not add any seam allowance to the center back because I, I already have one inch zip allowance at the center back. This is the back yoke. I cut two pieces on the lace fabric and four pieces on the skin tone mesh. And the skin tone mesh will be used as a lining for the yoke pieces. These are the remaining two back pieces. I cut two pieces each on the African print fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric. I have already interfaced the wrong size of the lining pieces. These three pieces are for the front of the blouse. I use half an inch seam allowance all around the yoke and the center front of the yoke was cut on fold. I cut one piece on fold on the lace fabric and two pieces on fold on the skin tone mesh. The skin tone mesh will be used as a lining for the lace fabric. As for these two remaining pattern pieces, I use half an inch seam allowance all through except for the side seam where I use 1.5 inches side seam allowance. This center front piece was cut on fold. I cut one piece of the center front piece on the African print fabric and another piece on the lining fabric and I've already interfaced and padded the bust area on the wrong side of the lining fabric. This is the side front piece. I use half an inch seam allowance all around except for the side seam where I use 1.5 inches. I cut two pieces on the African print fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric and I've also interfaced and padded the bust area on the wrong side of the lining piece. This is the bishop collar for the blouse. I cut two pieces on fold on the African print fabric. I interfaced the wrong side of just one of the collar pieces. I will now go ahead and cut out the cape using this pattern piece as a template. So I'll fold the African print fabric on bias like this. 
The length of the cape is 28.5 inches. Remember that I got this measurement by measuring it, by measuring it out on the, on the pattern drafting tutorial. I will fold the fabric into four layers because I intend to cut four pieces of the cape. I will pin the pattern template in place. Then I will now extend the pattern to 28.5 inches, which is how long the cape should be. The width of the cape should be 4 inches wide, just like it was on the pattern template. I will add half an inch seam allowance all around before cutting it out. It is now time to cut out the flare that I will fix to the lower part of the sleeve. So the first thing I will do is measure the width of the hem of the sleeve and this is 13.5 inches. The length of the flare is 6 inches. To get the radius of the flare, I will divide 13.5 inches by 3.14 and this is equal to 4.3 inches. I divide it by 3.14 because I intend to cut a half circle flare. So I will use this two African print fabric for the flare. So I will fold it into two like this. I will fold, also fold it again into two to form a triangular shape like this. From the tip of the folded fabric, I will measure and mark 4.3 inches, which is the radius of the flare. Next, I will measure and mark 6 inches like this, and this is the length of the flare. I will also add 1 inch seam allowance to this for the seam allowance. I will now go ahead and cut out the flare. Next, I will cut out the flare, which I will use as a peplum of the blouse. I have to do some calculations. The waist circumference that I'm working with is 35 inches. The side seam allowance on the bodies of the blouse is 1.5 inches. I have four side seams, so I will multiply 1.5 inches by 4 and this is equal to 6 inches. The zip allowance at the center back is 1 inch wide. We have two back pieces, so I will multiply the 1 inch by 2 and this is equal to 2 inches. I will now go ahead and add these three values together and this is equal to 43 inches now i will calculate the radius by dividing 43 inches by 6.28 i'm dividing by 6.28 because i intend to cut a full circle flare and this gave me 6.8 inches
Next, I will estimate the length of the flare. The total length I want for the blouse is 26 inches. The length of the bodies, which I have already drafted in the previous tutorial, is 16 inches. So the length of the flare will be 26 inches minus 16 inches and this is equal to 10 inches. I will use this fabric piece to cut out the flare. So I'll fold the fabric into two like this. Then I will fold it again like this. Making it a total of four layers of fabric. The first thing I will do is to measure out the radius of the flare which is 6.8 inches. The length of the flare is 10 inches. So as to measure out the length of the flare from the tip of the fabric, I will add the value of the radius to the, to the length of the flare. And this is 6.8 plus 10 inches, and this is equal to 16.8 inches. So from the tip of the fabric at this corner, I will measure and mark 16.8 inches like this. I will now add one inch seam allowance to the end of the flare like this. I will now go ahead and cut out the flare. I have also gone ahead to cut out the flare on the lining fabric. I will now go ahead and cut the flare into two pieces, one for the back and the other piece will be for the front. This piece is for the back, I will fold it into two equal halves, then I will cut it into two like this. I will also do the same thing for the lining fabric. On the table, I have laid out the front and back body spaces. I will now paint the front body spaces together first, like this, right side to right side. I will also paint the back border spaces together like this, right side to right side. Once I'm done painting, I will take it. I will take the pieces to my sewing machine, and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see, and I've gone ahead to press open all the seam allowances. I have also done the same thing for the lining pieces as well. These are the front and back yoke pieces, which I cut out on the lace fabric. 
and also on the skin tone mesh. The skin tone mesh will serve as the lining for the lace pieces. This is the front yoke piece. All that I will do is to use basting stitches to hold the lace and the two skin tone mesh together using one quarter of an inch seam allowance. As for these two back pieces, it is a different ball game altogether. I will place one skin tone mesh on top and another skin tone mesh below the lace fabric so that the lace fabric is sandwiched in between the two skin tone mesh pieces. I will now stick the center back side only. This side is the side with the keyhole cutout using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for this other yoke piece as well. So now I've gone ahead to do the stitching. I use basting stitches to hold the front yoke and the skin to mesh together using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. These are the two back yoke pieces. As you can see, I have sewn this side with the key hole cut out using half an inch sewing allowance. I will now go ahead and trim the half an inch seam allowance to about one quarter of an inch seam allowance. This is the cape of the blouse. I'll go ahead and notch the upper part of the, of the cape like this. I cut four pieces of the cape and I interface just two pieces out of the four cape, cape pieces. So I will pick one cape piece with the interfacing, another piece without the interfacing. I will align the two pieces properly, right side to right side. I will now go ahead and stitch the lower part of the cape using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see and I've given the two cape pieces a thorough press. I will now bring out the front and back body pieces. What I will do now is to measure and mark half an inch away from the four arm holes of the front and back arm hole curves. This will create the space to fix the sleeves later on. I will now place the two cap pieces on the bodies like this. I will pin the two pieces in place at the center front like this. The two cape pieces will overlap slightly at the center front. After I'm done pinning, I will now transfer the half an inch that I measured and marked away from the front and back arm moles to the cape.
I will stitch these two markings on this side. I will also stitch these two markings on this side. I will notch these points with my scissors like this so that I will now know the exact place to sew, to sew when I turn the cape to the wrong side. I will now turn these two cape pieces to the wrong side so the right sides are together. I will now go ahead and do the stitching using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I will now go ahead and turn the cape pieces to the right side like this. This end of the cape is too wide for the for the design that I'm going that I'm going for. So I will reduce the width like this and I will trim it off. I will now go ahead and pin the cape to the front bodies like this on the right side of the bodies. The two cap pieces should overlap a little bit so that there will be no gap in between the two cap pieces after sewing. The side of the cape without the interfacing should face up. I will also pin the cape to the two back pieces on the right side like this. Also, the parts of the cape without the interfacing should face up. Once I'm done painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So do not sew this, do not sew this half an inch allowance that I left around the four arm holes because this is where, this is the space for fixing the sleeves related really on while sewing. So now the stitching has been done. I will now go ahead and paint the yoke to the bodies like this right side to right side, making sure that the middle point on the front yoke are match up with the middle point on the bodies. I will also pin the back yoke pieces to the bodies like this right side to right side. Once I'm done painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch the yoke in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So the stitching has been done. I will now turn the, the fabric to the wrong side. 
Then I will notch the front seam allowance around the area where the yoke was fixed to the bodies. So that it can relax and lie flat. The next thing to do is to go ahead and join the front and back shoulders together. To do this, I will sound which the front shoulders in between the back shoulders, lace fabric and skin tone mesh. I will pin in place first. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done. I will now reduce the half an inch seam allowance to one quarter of an inch seam allowance like this. I will now turn it to the right side. I will turn the shoulders to the right side like this. And this is what the shoulder seam line looks like on the right side. You can see how neat it is. All the raw edges are not visible on the outside of the garment, both on the outside and also on the inside of the garment. Also, the fact that I trimmed the seam allowance makes the raw edges to be fairly invisible, both on the right side and also on the wrong side of the fabric. It is now time to fix the, bish the bishop collar. I fuse interfacing to just one collar piece. This side that I notched is the upper part of the collar. I will now place the two collar pieces together, right side to right side. I will now go ahead and do the stitching of the upper part only using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. And I've gone ahead to give the bishop collar a thorough press. On the main bodies, I will go ahead and notch the center front on the front yoke like this. I have already notched the center front on the bishop collar. I will now paint the bishop collar, the side without the interfacing, to the neckline of the bodies. Making sure that the midpoint on the collar match up with the midpoint on the yoke. Once I'm done pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. I will now go ahead and notch the same allowance like this. Next, I will fold the collar so that right sides are together. I will make sure that this end, the seam allowance at this end is folded upwards. I will pin in place and I will stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. Make sure that the seam allowance at this end is folded upwards. Like this. I will now stitch using half an inch sewing allowance.
So now the stitching has been done. See? And I've also reduced the seam allowance at the two ends of the bishop collar so as to reduce the fabric, fabric bulk at these two ends. And also as you can see the seam allowances was folded upwards and I've also pressed in place the half an inch seam allowance at this open end of the collar. I will now arrange the collar very well like this. You can baste in place. I will now turn the blouse to the right side and I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in the groove so that the stitching line is not visible on the right side of the collar. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I will fix a press button to the back of the collar later on. It is now time to fix the lining. So with the right side of the lining facing the wrong side of the blouse, I will paint the front lining piece in place like this. I will also paint in place the back lining pieces like this. Once I'm done painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see, I've already fixed the lining in place. After stitching the lining in place, I notched the seam allowance and then I now went ahead after notching to understick the seam allowance to the lining fabric for both the back and the front pieces. Make sure that you have half an inch seam allowance A for fixing of the sleeves to the armhole of the blouse. This is the front flare piece. I will now place the lining flare piece on top of it like this so that right sides are together. I will now go ahead and stitch the two pieces together using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for the back flare pieces as well. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. And I've also gone ahead to give all the flare pieces a thorough press with my iron. I will now go ahead and pin the flare to the bodies of the blouse right side to right side. I will do the painting fabric to fabric and lining to lining for both the front and the back flare pieces. So now I've gone ahead to do the stitching using half an inch sewing allowance. I will now turn the fabric to the wrong side and I will stick the side seam using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done for the three side seams out of the four side seams. As for this open end, I will fold in half an inch 
same allowance like this i will now go ahead and do the stop stitching on my sewing machine once i'm done with that i will now go ahead and sew the side seams together right side to right side using the remaining one inch seam allowance remember that i use 1.5 inches as a side seam allowance when i was cutting out the fabric so now i have gone ahead to sew the side seams together as you can see at the center back where the zip allowance is i will also fold in half an inch seam allowance and I will top stitch both the center back pieces. So now I have done the top stitching. I will now measure and mark the remaining half an inch zip allowance at the center back of the blouse. Remember that we use one inch as the zip allowance and we've already folded in half an inch. I will now go ahead and fix this zip to the center back of the blouse. So now I've gone ahead to fix this, this zip as you can see. I have trimmed off the excess zip at this lower hand and at the upper part I folded over the excess zip and I sticked it down. It is now time to fix the sleeves to the armhole of the blouse. So these are the two sleeve pieces which I cut on the lace fabric. I will now go ahead and fix the flare to the end of the sleeve using French stitching technique because the lace is transparent. So now I have fixed the flare to the end of the sleeve. I have also aimed the lower part of the flare. I will now go ahead and sew the side seams of the sleeves. I will also use stitching technique for this. So with the wrong sides together, I will sew the side seams using half an inch sewing allowance. I will do this for both sleeve pieces. So now the stitching has been done. I will now reduce the half an inch seam allowance to one quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I will do the trimming. Once I'm done trimming, I will turn the sleeves to the wrong side and I will do a second stitching using the remaining half an inch seam allowance. Remember that I used one inch as the side seam allowance when I was cutting out the fabric. So the remaining half an inch will be sewn in place like this. So now the stitching has been done and I have given the two sleeves a thorough press using my iron. I will now go ahead and paint the sleeve to the armhole of the blouse. At this point, if you did not leave the half an inch allowance around the cape area, we find it very difficult to, feel the sleeve, to fix the sleeve to the armhole of the blouse. So I will paint the sleeve to the ammo like this, wrong sides are together. I will also be doing a French seam for this. So making sure that the center of the sleeve match up with the shoulder seam line. I will paint in place like this. Once I'm done painting, I will stitch using one quarter of an inch seam allowance. I will do the same thing for the other sleeve as well. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. I will now go ahead and reduce the one quarter inch seam allowance to about one eighth of an inch.
once i'm done once i'm done trimming i will turn the blouse to the wrong side like this I will now go ahead and do a second stitching all around the armhole using the remaining one quarter inch seam allowance. Remember that I used half an inch seam allowance around the armhole when I was cutting out the fabric. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I will now turn the blouse to the right side. And this is what the blouse looks like on the right side. I will now go ahead and fix a press button to the center back of the bishop collar. So now I have fixed the press button to the center back of the bishop collar as you can see. And this is the final look of the blouse. So that's it guys, we are done. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing, and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.